1911 Octo Auto had eight wheels and claimed that each tire lasted longer since it carried one-eighth of the load instead of one-fourth. Modern cars do not adhere to this principle. The following is a rather unusual advertisement written for a rather unusual car. The Octo Auto, an appreciation by Albert Hubbard. In the good old days, when I used to take cattle to the Chicago stock yards, I carried a long hickory pole, a basket of grub, and much enthusiasm. On long runs, my home was in the caboose for perhaps three days and three nights. It was a sad day, however, when, instead of a regular, genuine caboose, they bundled the merry stockmen into a dinky. The difference between a dinky and a caboose is that a caboose has four wheels on each side, and a dinky has only four wheels altogether, one on each corner. The dinky's business is to bounce, jounce, jolt, jar, and jerk, and make a puncture in your vocabulary. A wheel is a plan of continually hitting the rail. The Pullmans, it was, who discovered that when you hit the rail in 12 places in running a car, you greatly reduce the amount of jar and the wear and tear both on the rails and the rolling stock. A car having 12 wheels is considered doubly as safe as one having eight. A wheel lives its life exactly as a man does his. A man will stand a great number of raps and kicks supplied by fate, provided they are distributed over a long period of time. But when you come to concentrate them in a few years, or a few months, or a few days, you destroy the man by destroying his nerve fabric. In the Reeves Octo Auto, the load is distributed over eight wheels, instead of being concentrated on four. In a four-wheeled automobile, a wheel at each corner carries one-fourth of the load, in case of an imperfection in the road, the sudden dropping down into a rut, one wheel may for an instant carry half of the load, and it is this sudden jolt and burden that causes the tire trouble. You get enough of these tremendous pressures in a day, and your tire reaches its limit and explodes with a loud R.G. Dunn & Company report. If you are running fast, you may lose control and the ditch, always waiting, gets you. So the proposition is, if you can save your wheels from these severe jolts, which will occasionally come through dropping into a rut, you are going to prolong the life of the tire, the life of the car, and the life of the occupants. When you break your leg or sprain your ankle, it is not on account of a slow, long service. It is because you get a sudden twist or smash. Just so with tires. It is jam and jar that does the business. It is figured out on a reasonable basis that by the use of eight wheels, Eight times the ordinary service is obtainable. If a car were always evenly balanced on four wheels, your tires would live probably ten times as long as they now do. But in turning corners and dropping into ruts and hitting high places, a severe shock has to be met by your wheel. It is the accumulated results of these shocks that lays you up at the inopportune time. I had the pleasure of riding in an Octo Auto in Chicago. The driver was a reckless fellow, and the wonder is that we were not pinched and given the limit by the judge, but fortunately our driver picked streets that no other auto with a sane chauffeur would attempt to navigate. Chicago not only has some of the best pavement in the world, but I believe it can safely claim the booby prize for the worst. The worst pavement possible is the Nicholson blocks, where time gets the better of their ego. A busted up Nicholson pavement is absolutely the end of the limit. We took Nicholson pavement, which was laid in 1885 at the rate of 25 miles an hour, absolutely oblivious of the ruts. Very few of these ruts were over three feet, but so evenly was a weight divided that we were on terracotta most of the time, and the wear and tear and jar were distributed. For before one wheel could really go down and hit the bottom of a rut, the wheel behind it was to the rescue on a firm footing and relieved the strain. This taking ruts and bumps without jar is something that no man can possibly appreciate who has not experienced a ride in an Octo Auto. In this thing of running over a surface filled with ruts that are from three to six inches deep, and yet experiencing scarcely any bounce, jounce, jar, or jolt, two big items are obtainable. One is ease to the passenger, and the next is length of life to the auto. The whole arrangement is very simple and is a shock absorber beyond the dreams of the neurotic. The Reeves Octo Auto car is conventional throughout, except the four additional carrying wheels. Steers and controls exactly the same as a four-wheeled car. It is the only easy-riding car in the world. The only car in the world built on the principle of a Pullman Palace car. The easiest car in the world on tires. Tire authorities say that tires on an Octo Auto should give eight times the ordinary service. 
This truly wonderful car is manufactured and sold by M. O. Reeves, Columbus, Indiana, President, People's Savings and Trust Company, Vice President, Reeves Pulley Company. He will be glad to send a full descriptive pamphlet containing prices to those interested. Agents Wanted.